Rap fans know about the war between the East and West Coast that got Biggie and Pac killed. But most people don't know, it can all be traced back to one crazy night that changed hip hop forever. So today we're breaking down the entire wild story behind the scenes. Tupac and Biggie went to war with each other and ended up losing their lives to the beat. But back in the day, they were really tight. Biggie met him out in LA and they became homies from the jump. Pac helped him out in the early days by bringing Biggie out on stage with him when he was in New York. When Biggie was trying to break into the industry, Pac was already popping off and becoming one of the hottest rappers in the game. Biggie wanted to get on the same level and he even asked Pac to become his manager. According to rumors, Pac invited Biggie to join his Thug Life crew, but Biggie decided to create Junior Mafia and start his own wave instead. Even though they weren't officially linked up through any business deals, Pac and Biggie were still making moves together and recorded a couple of tracks. Suge Knight kicked off the war at the 95 Source Awards, but before we get to the night that changed the game forever, we have to take a look at why it went down in the first place. In 94, Pac and Biggie were still tight, and one night when he was in New York, Pac went to Quad Studios to link up with Biggie and Diddy. He was hired by a dude named Jimmy Henchman to record a track for his artist Lil Sean, even though Biggie had warned him to stay away from Henchman. When Pac went to the studio with his homies, some goons rushed him in the lobby and he got shot during the struggle. Dexter Isaac is serving a life sentence for murder right now, and he claims that Henchman paid him 2.5k to rob Pac at the studio. Everyone knew being around Henchman was going to lead to drama but Pac thought Biggie and Diddy might have been involved with the setup too. The situation was already getting heated, but then Pac went to jail on sexual abuse charge and everything got worse. While he was on the inside, Biggie dropped the track Who Shot Ya and rapped, Who Shot Ya? Separate the weak from the obsolete. Hard to creep them Brooklyn streets. It's on, nigga. Fuck all that bickering beef. Biggie said the song wasn't about Pac at all, but that didn't stop people from believing he was sending sneak disses over to Quad Studio shooting. Pac thought it was about him too. And in an interview, he said, even if it ain't about me, nigga, you should be like, I'm not putting it out because he might think it's about him. At the same time, Suge Knight was visiting Pac in prison and offered to bail him out if he signed with Death Row Records. Suge had a grip on the West Coast already with Dre and Snoop Dogg on the label, but signing Pac was one of the biggest moves in rap history. But Suge wasn't just a record executive pushing papers and wearing suits. He dominated the game through violence and terrified everyone who got in the way. On the opposite side of the country, Diddy was taking over the East Coast with his Bad Boy record label. He started in 93, and Biggie's debut album was the first project they released. Diddy wanted to be in the spotlight though, and he was always putting ad-libs on his artist's songs and showing up in their videos. New York had been running the rap game since it started, and artists from the West Coast felt like they didn't get the same respect or shine in the industry. Back then, the issue was now in the open for the public to see, but there was still tension behind the scenes, and at the 95 Source Awards, Suge took the stage and changed the industry forever. Death Row had produced a soundtrack for a movie called Above the Rim and won the Source Award for Soundtrack of the Year. That night, Suge went on stage to accept it, and nobody expected what happened next. At the end of his speech, Suge took the first real shot in the East vs. West Coast beef by calling out Diddy and telling all the artists in the crowd, Any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star and don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing. Death the New York crowd started booing and yelling while Suge walked off the stage, and Questlove from The Roots says that's the moment everything changed. In an interview with Pitchfork, he said, that was the day when Suge called out Puffy, and there were fights in the audience. I felt like a bomb was going to detonate. Corrupt is a rapper who was signed with Death Row back then, and even though he was cool with Diddy, he said that everyone in the crew was ready to throw down that night. I mean, the only thing is, you know, we here in New York, everybody around us, you know, you just put your ten toes down and what's happening? What's happening then? That's it. And you just look around, what's happening? And to be honest, I can't lie, we was all pumped up about it, like, oh, cuz it's cracking. Cause that, you know, that's what we do at Death Row. Shug dissing one of the biggest executives on the East Coast in his own territory had everyone fired up. And at that point, it didn't matter if you used to be cool with dudes on the other side because Suge put his foot down and made a line in the sand. Personal relationships didn't matter anymore. It was just one side versus the other. According to Lil C's, We didn't know about, I didn't know if him and Puff had no, we didn't know about them having no issues and situations like that. We didn't think nothing of it because while we was there doing rehearsals and things like that, we was actually seeing them, seeing dad, seeing what's up with dad, seeing Snoop, what up? And, you know, everything was all fine. We thinking everything is all love, you know what I mean? He said they were all good with the Death Row dudes before the show actually started. But when Suge called Diddy out, they were ready to get it popping. Suge might have taken the first shot, but that crazy night was just getting started. 
Dr. Dre won producer of the year later that night, and Snoop Dogg walked on stage with him. By that point, everyone was already feeling the tension, and Snoop didn't like the energy. So he grabbed the mic and called out the whole East Coast. The East Coast ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Death Row. Y'all don't love us. Y'all don't love us. Well, let it be known then. We, we know y'all East Coast. We know we at East Coast and L. Nobody knew what was going to happen next. And attention was crazy when Diddy hopped on stage to present an award. But instead of clapping back at Suge, he tried to squash the situation right there. He grabbed the mic and said, But con check this out. Contrary to what other people may feel, I would like to say that I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Suge Knight for their accomplishments. And all this East and West that needs to stop. It seemed like Diddy didn't want to escalate the situation. But then during the Bad Boy Records performance later that night, he kicked it off by saying, I live in the East, in the East, in the East. And I'm going to die in the East. The real violence didn't start until after the awards, but according to Crazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, Suge tried to pay a goon 10K to run up on stage and take him out that night. They told me that they, they was like, they was, they was gonna pay somebody 10,000 to run up there with them and, 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 and sling on y'all with a cane, with a cane. Yeah, yeah. Bone Thugs had dropped a video for their track first of the month, and in the video, they were wearing beanies that were on fire. Beanies were part of Death Row's aesthetic back then, and apparently Suge thought the video was disrespectful. According to rumors, that wasn't the only time Suge wanted to take an artist out at an awards show. Eminem's ex-bodyguard, Myron Williams, says that at the 2001 Source Awards, Suge's goons almost put hands on M, but he snatched him out of the situation before anything could happen to him. Then in 2004, Suge allegedly paid a dude named Jimmy Johnson 5K to attack Dr. Dre at the Vibe Awards. Johnson ran up on Dre and hit him in the head which sparked a massive brawl that ended with Young Buck stabbing Johnson. Those were both wild situations, but it was nothing compared to what happened after the Source Awards in 95. One month after he sparked the war, Suge's homie was allegedly killed by Diddy's bodyguard, and when Snoop went to New York to film a music video, someone came through and shot up his trailer. When Pac got out of jail and started rocking with Death Row, he turned up the heat and dropped the track Hit Him Up and said, First off, fuck your bitch and the click you claim. West side when we ride, come equipped with game. You claim to be a player, but I fucked your wife. We bust on bad boys, niggas fuck for life. Plus, Puffy trying to see me. Weak hearts, I rip. Biggie Smalls and Junior Mafia, some mark-ass bitches. Within two years after the awards, Tupac and Biggie were both dead, and rumors say Suge and Diddy were behind it all. Their murder cases were never officially closed, but Diddy allegedly had Pac taken out, so Suge paid a shooter to kill Biggie when he visited LA a few months later. Most people blame Suge for everything that went down, but Diddy is allegedly just as responsible for the war. According to rumors, he knew exactly what would happen if Biggie dropped who shot you after the quad studio shooting. He allegedly wanted to spark a beef between Biggie and Pac to sell more records, and without his involvement, they might have stayed homies. Pac and Biggie were still tight in 95, the East and West would have never gone to war like that. Even if Suge is Diddy on stage, without Tupac stamping the beef, it probably would have just stayed a personal beef between Suge and Diddy and nobody would have died over it. But unfortunately, that's not how it played out, and the rap game ended up losing two legends because of one crazy night.